Hey guys, what is going on, Ramesh and welcome back to the episode of Cards and Castles, where today we are going to be looking at a special showcase for hitting combos. Now, this deck isn't really one of my own, but I've seen it on TV, and, um, you know, it was quite interesting to me, personally, and knowing that the user was on Discord, uh, I saw his list, and asked if I could review the deck, and... Here we are. So, uh, with that being said, we will be looking into Tyrannus's demon base deck. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring him on for today's video, uh, but he did send me a couple of guidelines, a couple of uh, you know tidbits on the deck to give to you guys. So, if you are to replicate this deck or if you want to try it for yourself, uh, you can go along with some of these tips. I may not be reading them word for word, trying to paraphrase as much as I can here just to save time. But anyway, enough of me just you know. Introing the deck, let's go over Tyrannus' Demon deck. Alright, so here is Tyrannus' Demon deck list. Now, it is slightly modified. I have an extra Keeper of the Doorway over his extra Armory. Uh, you guys can swap those however you choose so. I think having the uh, third unit is just slightly better for me uh, over the Armory. But again, just my take on it. Uh, but anyway, what's kind of the main theme of the deck? What's the meat of and potatoes of it? Well, Tyrannus writes in his first point, the main hidden combo of the deck is Master at Arms and his interactions. With Cargrum, he can either negate his effect to your units or power up Cargrum himself. With Archie, it makes it much harder to kill him as he is less likely to leave an enemy at low health to take him out next turn. And with Darkbender, basically builds tat uh, a tactical missile system in his own words when the opponent tries to attack your units. As a 6 attack, likely more with all the buffs in this deck, uh, can take out a lot. So, uh, you heard it right there. The main kind of interaction goes back to Master at Arms and his new combo ability of giving a friendly unit plus 2 attack every time he uh, combos with or uh, combats another unit. Uh, and he mentions the three sort of big targets you want to hit a buff on is either the Cargrom, uh, the Archganon, or yeah, Archanon, or the Darkbender. Uh, Archanon is kind of pretty obvious for his lifestyle reasons. Same with Darkbender. Uh, the greater attack a range unit has, the more lethal it becomes. And Cargrom is just a bit interesting. Um, I mean, he kind of mentions that you can make Cargrom stronger, of course. But with Cargrom out on the board, Master at Arms pretty much negates that extra, you know, minus two damage or minus two attack, excuse me, to a unit. So having Master at Arms hit something and then immediately gain that back. Uh, or gain that plus two attack back with Cargrom on the field is just uh, so much better. He also notes at a second point, the sacrifice and buff spells um, are another key feature in the deck. These are not only for draw and Car uh, Cargi enablement, uh, but to buff up any of the three cards Master wants to hit, or Talibos. Um, he mentions that Dark Fire may seem odd, but off of an Arcanon it can be amazing, and I have had it to, or, excuse me, I have had it to be a very good clear before. Had it be a very good, okay. Little, little English iffy there. Um, with Archie, he, or Archie, he, here it may seem weird to run three lightning blade, but you can play around with this, uh, using it after Arcanon is dead, before he is played, or with a critical mass to increase your odds. The blacksmith and armory negate the negatives of Kargi, and make, uh, and make when you get a master or a buff card even more brutal. All right, little little English messing up on my part there. Uh, but the next point kind of goes to the various buffs and sacrifices that are within the deck. Uh, now the key reason I wanted to play around with this deck was because of the Arcanon uh, randomness, especially with so many sacrifice spells like Grotesque, Talibos, and Darkfire. You can easily just sacrifice an enemy unit. Uh, to trigger any of these effects, which might be, you know, great for you. Um, or, you know, if they sacrifice your own, it's no big deal, especially if you have maybe a draw or Talibos, uh, you may want to sack it anyway. Uh, but, uh, he also mentions that the buffs in here, Lightning Blade, Armory, and Blacksmith, uh, do keep them to negate possible Cargorom, um, neg neg negativity? Cargorom negativity, maybe? I can use that as a phrase. Uh, which, you know... Blacksmith Armory, things I run nearly in every deck myself, so I kind of understand the uh, the reason, the logic even more behind Cargrom at that point. Uh, the third point he mentions, the Altar Keeper and Arcanon. Uh, the Altar's here as sack fodder and to build up a, you know, Horde Keeper, because with the amount of buffs, he often gets more than one hit. And Arcanon to protect your two general big hitters, Darkbender and Cargrom to a lesser extent. Um, so... 
these uh, or the more undead elements of the deck. Uh, he's mentioning here um, Alter, Keeper of the Doorway, to a lesser degree Arcanon as well, even though um, Arcanon can be on the fence between you know a support and a big hitter himself. Uh, I'm going to focus more on the, mainly on the Unholy Alter and Keeper of the Doorway since we've already talked about Arcanon previously. Um, I'm having, or at least he has these cards in here. To allow yourself to build up a little bit of extra sacrifice fodder for cards like Darkfire, Talibos, Grotesque Offering. You can have those zombies or potentially other undead units that you may not be taking full advantage of. You can use them as sack fodder to, again, enable some card ground plays, draw, uh, summon another unit, etc. So, a um, little extra undead fodder to build up your army. And the game plan as our point number four. Generally, this deck wins by a huge Dark Bender, Arcanon, or Kargrom. This can be sometimes played as aggro, but slower aggro as your fastest general winning combo is on turn four and five, referring to the combo between Master at Arms and whatever else you might want to attack, or excuse me, whatever you may want to buff with Master at Arms combo. Uh, you'll want to usually hold back a bit until you get a Dark Bender or Master, especially if you have a cheap unit and a sacrifice spell such as Grotesque in the uh, in the case neither Bender nor Master are near, then you could probably get away with playing a bit more aggro. Now, worst case scenario, uh, the all sack no attack. Uh, basically, hope for a unit to have an or, or excuse me. Basically, hope for a unit or hope to have Alter or make it to a turn seven Arcanon, which is what I added, uh, referring to a little miss edit on Discord's part. Also, to make sure that you do uh, push because this deck can be fairly frequent. Uh, or excuse me. Also, be mindful to make sure that you do push every so often because this deck can fairly frequently win before sudden death so uh just kind of the mental game plan the mental strategy there uh you may want to hold back until you have maybe your you know master at arms that kind of combination in the bag ready to go or if you feel like you're a more aggro based player you do better on the offensive this deck can work uh, in that favor as well depending on what you're dealt with though of course you know it's up for interpretation but overall that's kind of the general overview of Tyrannus's deck uh, I'm probably gonna add a bit more of my insight uh, after our match just to see how it plays out show you guys a quick matchup with this deck and uh, again give you my like final uh, outtake on it my advice you know on how to maybe improve it if you're playing it or how I felt playing it regardless let's go ahead and jump right into the match with that being said and see how Tyrannus's demon deck uh, fares I guess that's that's the right word right fares all right so bit of an iffy start here with the dark fire and drain life and to swap those out blacksmith armory all right not looking too bad I'm gonna try and follow uh, while while doing this I'm gonna see if I can try and follow what, you know, Tyrannus' guidelines, you know, to the best I can, hopefully kind of recreating a little bit of how he would play his deck, Ugh, if that makes sense. Start off with a raw Chaotic Storm hitting me in the face um, for three damage. We do have the Salahar, though, so not too bad to counteract. Uh, I see Pirate Warlock, so potentially some kind of Swarm deck, maybe a damage focus deck, not really sure. Uh, we'll probably see later on as the match goes. He's going to hide a Master Thief back there in the corner. Interesting choice, but now we're going to go ahead, hit for f two on face. And of course, Mischievous Imp to follow up. Um, he's got four gold though, so maybe a Barbarian in his future. Thief trading there. He's got four gold, you got to do something with it. Estate. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chaotic Storm, alright. going to be very useful against the Imp actually. Um... Let's go ahead and summon another one, see what we can do, see if we can uh, do anything better with that. Uh, Alright, just kind of, you know, I got his little lines here in front of me. Uh, Alright, incinerate, so definitely a burn focused deck, I believe. Gonna get rid of the master, the, uh, master at arms, excuse me? Maybe? If not, we'd be really set on finding it okay um yikes it's a bit of a yikes not gonna lie then we'll throw out our blacksmith as well do a little bit of work here uh, hopefully I don't know
Buffed lifesteal is dangerous, of course. Incinerator Black's not going to do a whole lot for you. hope he realizes. Ah, oh, damn it. I thought he was going to be putting it right next to his guy. Um, Dark Bender isn't a bad find. But I can't follow up with any decent move, if that's the case. That went to that. Okay. So we're moving it back a bit. Fine. We'll see if he takes the face damage. If he does, we might be able to pull ourselves out. Uh oh. Uh, Lich hits what? Great. Not what we had needed. We'll do that. Yeah. That'll be a play. And we'll see how he responds. He's only, we're only working off, like, the draw here. Uh, we're gonna rush things at me. Okay. What can we get off of fear? That. Then we could do. Yep. That's the play. Because then we have a Cargrom next turn, which would be great. Hmm. All right, little blaze action. Um, no, I think I have to do the Yenaroth. Just makes more sense here. Yeah, and then that goes away. So now he's dealing with a 7-9, which he's got to figure out how to remove fast, or else this game is over. Alright, so a bit bit of a rougher game than I would have liked to showcase the, for the deck, but, you know, you, we did see how Cargrom could come out. I think that's actually game, is it? I don't know, let's see. Yeah, it's game. Uh, so yeah, a little, little bit of a rougher uh, showcase for the deck, but... Overall, I do think it has its high and low points. Um, with the deck, you got to be careful not to, you know, dead draw in your early phases. You know, cards like Grotesque and Drain Life, which you really can't use in the opening moments, can be a big, you know, falter of the deck. In my opinion, again, this is not really my deck, so I'm just kind of giving some advice where I think I would see fit. Um, but yeah, I do think some elements work together fairly nicely, though. Dark Fire and Grotesque, obviously great tools. Arcanon, uh, to, ran to randomly sacrifice your enemies rather than you. Always a great thing to do and funny thing to do with that. Uh, so yeah, I think the deck does work in some sense, but I d would probably be more careful about what you're kind of cycling out and what you're using when. Because uh, that's definitely something that you got to have to uh, consider. I mean, not not really with this deck alone, but kind of with all games. That kind of goes f you know, without saying. But um, with this deck, I think it's a bit more important to kind of highlight that uh, because of how, you know, Sometimes you need certain elements to, you know, or you need certain elements to happen in a match um, before you can use others or your more powerful tools. So uh, something to keep in mind just when running the deck. But overall, again, I think this is definitely a fun deck. One that I was happy to showcase on this channel at least. And uh, I think he did a great, great job with it.
All right, folks, and with that being said, um, if you haven't done so already, be sure to leave a like on the video, share with friends, and leave a comment down below with your thoughts regarding uh, Tyrannus' demon-based deck. A huge thank you to him for letting me showcase it here on the channel. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, we weren't able to get him on, but he did leave these guidelines for us, which I hope help you guys in learning how to play the deck a little bit better, hopefully better than I can explain it. Since it was really my deck, I couldn't, you know, I can't really give you guys a lot of... Um, advice on how to play it i can only try in the best of words that i can to explain to you guys how i would think to play it uh but ultimately you know tyrannus is the creator of the deck so he knows how to play this deck you know really well or to the best that it can possibly be uh so again thank you to him for giving us uh for giving us excuse me those guidelines and uh yeah with that being said if you've already done so be sure to hit that subscribe button help show you support the channel by clicking that subscribe button and notice the cost to you so uh yeah uh, with that being said, until next time, guys, stay gaming.